I'm remaking the Super Nintendo game, Plock. Today we're going to remake the unicycle bonus stage, and we're going to start to work on the second world. If you stick around until the end, we'll do a quick fire round of small changes. The unicycle is like vehicles we've made before. I would say it's a slower version of the motorbike, and it has slippery controls. To make the unicycle controls feel slippy, we're going to use the lerp function when changing direction. This function allows us to get a value between our current speed and our intended speed over time. We can use this to gradually speed up when changing directions. Due to the gradual speed change, we get this slippery effect when changing directions. I added animations. Unlike the existing vehicles, we can't just set the rotation or have a single animation. This is because the player bobbing, wheel spinning and the player's water gun must all move on their own. We don't want to have to add animations for if the player is holding the gun but not moving and vice versa, it will just get really messy. So instead each sprite goes on a different layer. I then added sprites for the water cannon's projectiles. I began to map out the level when I suddenly hit a big problem. Moving platforms don't play nice with vehicles. After a lot of head scratching, I got it working. These platforms are meant to look different to the rest, so I started drawing them and I messed around with filters. I was getting some cool effects, but in the end I felt it was too different to the rest of my art, so I simplified it. The level can be accessed from the blind leap stage by waiting on a moving platform. Here's the finished level. We can't add the warp for this level yet as it goes to Plock's house, a level that I've not yet created. Aside from this warp, World 1 is done, so I'll most likely upload a full playthrough of World 1 in the coming days. The first stage of World 2, Garland Beach, introduces a lot of new mechanics and a lot of art that we don't have. We've got lots of new tiles, Hornet Egg, Hornets, Plock with Hornets flying around his head, Targets, Coat Hangers to collect Plock's limbs, Stretching Platforms, Flea Eggs, Fleas, Orson, another secret. <sighs> another secret shell stage. New flea flags that heal you. New water. UI for how many fleas are remaining. Building houses. Destructible terrain. These collectibles that give you a plot letter. So yeah, this might take a few videos to implement. I've implemented an early version of the target and coat hanger system. When you hit a target, your limbs are stored on the nearest coat hanger and can be collected. Targets will trigger an action when hit. This one makes a platform appear and stretch across. I shared an early look at the unicycle and this target system in the Discord, so join the Discord. Create some level art for the stage. I'm using some of the tile outlines from the original to make sure that my slopes match up. Last time I mentioned a vote that was going on to determine whether to do sound isolation, that being taking sounds from the original game, or mouth noises. It was a close vote, but sound isolation came out on top. I may still use mouth sounds for sound effects that don't exist. Sound isolation has become a lot easier thanks to a YouTube comment from Basil Flute. The steps they gave allow me to get clearer sounds by disabling other sound channels. I won't share the method here, but if you're interested, it's in the previous video's comment. With this, I was able to quickly add sound effects for all of World 1. Small changes. The Squire can now fire faster and also has an audio cue when your gun has reloaded. The flowers have their own projectile art. Rocky fellas can no longer harm the player when dying. Moving platforms that require the player now correctly trigger after 0.5 seconds. That's it for today, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.